Hello everyone and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Sim where I'm going to try out two new freeware planes available on flightsim.to. Both are converted from FSX. The first is the Milviz T38 Talon converted by Aviator 671. And then the second is the Piaggio P180, uh, which was converted by Manflexers Runway. Um, yeah, I don't know how to pronounce that properly, but uh, I'm sure it stands for something. I will link both in the video description, of course, and both say that they're not a perfectly accurate representation of the real aircraft. And, you know, things have been done to make them compatible with uh, FSX, uh, sorry, FS2020 from FSX. So we have to take that into consideration. They are, of course, free, so we should just be thankful. Uh, but, uh, and, you know, there isn't like a T-38 uh, floating around. There's supposed to be a Piaggio P-180 under development, uh, but it's been in development for a very long time. So I don't know what's happening with that. I forgot who was supposed to be making it. I think there's supposed to be an F-5 coming out, or it has already come out, but not a T-38. The T-38, of course, is special because it's the trainer aircraft for the astronauts, so they fly in them and you know go from place to place in them. So I'm going to go with the NASA livery and we're going to fly around Cape Canaveral with it. And we will see how it goes. Okay, so here we are. And as a condition for converting this aircraft from FSX, Milviz, which originally created this craft, said that the cockpit could not be clickable. So it's not clickable. Uh, so we know that going in. And, but otherwise, there are a lot of liveries for it because it was originally sort of a professionally made pack for FSX and the liveries do generally look good. So that's a positive. The interior looks good, but it is not functional all the way. In fact, uh, you might need some external instrumentation. In my case, I have a flight sim exporting the data onto my stream deck and so I can see stuff that actually the cockpit is going to have trouble displaying. So as I release the brakes and we go, it's a tiny little craft <laughs> and it's, it's a little bit wiggly right now. Okay, there we go. I come up, 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 all right. So you can see the thin needle on the speedometer is not going up, but the little triangle is, and that's correct. Uh, oh, yeah, that's correctly indicating the knots indicated. So we're at 300 knots. The altimeter is fine. The RPM up there is fine. What isn't fine and is sort of critical is our vertical speed indicator. Uh, as far as our course is concerned, the compass seems fine. But the, probably the most critical thing that doesn't seem to be working is the vertical speed indicator. So also, otherwise, everything on this side doesn't work. The temperature, the nozzle, the oil pressure, the fuel flow, and the fuel quantity are all not there. It does have afterburner effects. And this is what sounds like from outside. Well, we should probably get our flaps up. It handles well. It's fun to fly. It's a cute little thing. I took off from the skid strip. We can see the BAB over there. I have about 400 knots here. I, I think the Bijan Hibashi tree pack may be putting too many trees on the launch sites, but we'll see. Yeah, there's too many trees. But anyway, that's fine for now. Not relevant to the plane. Here we are skirting along. Fairly stable. It feels like a trainer. Feels like that sort of thing. I'm not at full throttle, I'm about 50% and we're holding at about 380 knots. Currently, even at this throttle, I would not have an hour worth of fuel. But that's down below, down here. But 
course, got the additional scenery for Cape Canaveral, which includes that Falcon Heavy. I think it was Aquila Sims Editions. It might have changed. I don't think there has been an update for that. So. Because it's so small, it's sort of nifty to fly around a bit. They can maneuver around things very easily. There we go. NASA on building, NASA on plane. Oh, there's the visitor center. Uh, we better watch out for buildings popping in. Oh dear. All right. Yes. Leaving the visitor center. Let's see about its maximum speed. So going up. We're holding at 360 knots climbing up. It's not climbing that fast, but it's climbing okay. It's not a rocket or anything. Yeah, of course the acceleration is not working, the angle of attack isn't working. That's just how it's going to be. Okay, well, jetting along here at 26,000 feet. We, the Mach indicator seems to be working. So we're at Mach 0.9 right now. In theory, it should be able to get past Mach 1, but not convincingly. It's sort of one of those transonic planes that sort of gets stuck transonic. So up to Mach 1.3. Well, I'm going to try and break the sound barrier by dipping down a bit. There's the transonic drag forcing our nose down, actually. Well, it's almost cleanly past Mach 1, but... As we climb, it's it's very tenuous, but this seems about right. It's not super capable at going supersonic, it's just barely capable of going supersonic. So I'm not going to test its full range, but overall I think it's not too bad as far as its performance is concerned. And it was famously a fun plane to fly, and it seems that way. It had a very high roll rate, and it does. Uh, I think it was two full revolutions per second it was capable of. So that part seems fine. I think I'm going to go ahead and land it now. Landing was tricky, because it does have... It's not as bad as the F-104, but it does have a fairly small wing. We'll just go back to where I started. The air brake does function from the external view. Let's see what happens when I activate it. It seems to decelerate faster than normal with the air brake out. So it's down there or they are down there. So that's fine. Let's see the landing gear extension animation. Super quick. All right. Yep, do have to watch out for that speed. It is an interesting engine sound. I don't know if the F-18 engine sound would be any more realistic. Okay. Okay, I just kept it, to, whoa, kept it to 150, slows down in a hurry with the brakes, but alright. 
So, whoa, as it skids off to somewhere. Ah, okay, 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 whoa. All right, we, we, we'll just park here. All right, that was the T38. Let's try the Piaggio P180. But first, let's just go through the large number of liveries that are available, including these Thunderbird liveries. Yes, that's quite a selection for the T38, the old Milvis plane. Uh, so we can go on to the Piaggio, which happens to be right next to... Uh, right next to T-38, so that's convenient. Let's get the payload down. All right, maximum takeoff weight. Let's see how it goes. I think I should fly in Italy for some reason. Okay, so here's the Piaggio P-180, and I think they've taken the, well, they say they've uh, taken the CJ-4 cockpit, uh, so the, the cockpit is functional. It's clickable and everything. Uh, or at least as clickable as the CJ4, presumably. And yeah, that's a good fit. And then they've used the engine sound from the King Air, which I guess would be a good fit too. So here is the external model. I actually remember this one from FSX, so... Yep. That seems familiar. Actually sounds reasonably good from in here. The... Uh, Okay, we are off. We are at Genoa. Let's take a look at the gear retraction. Ah, eh, not the best angle. That is a much slower gear retraction, but it's also a much more complicated gear retraction. I don't know about the propeller animation per se. I mean, of course, you know, there is that effect. Where when it's spinning real fast, fast it looks like it's spinning slow, but just sort of a little bit weird in this case. Okay, 173 knots and going up 190. This one's a little bit more finicky to handle. I'm really risking trying to handle it like the T38, which would be a mistake. So among the known issues for this are no taxi landing and logo lights, tendency to roll left. I've noticed that. <laughs> See, I am not touching the control stick right now. And uh, rolls backward at idle thrust on the ground. And then uh, there's some animations that were incorrect. So I'm going to add some right aileron trim to correct the leftward tendency. Better than that, it's a very unique plane after all. I'd like the Beechcraft Starship. I thought somebody was making it, but that hasn't popped up yet. The Beechcraft Starship is just sort of iconic because it was, uh, in the older versions of Flight Sim, sort of the the killer plane, uh, the one that was symbolic of the future and everything. Uh, but of course, it turned out that design-wise, it was a little bit iffy, especially with the affordability of uh, jets, business jets, uh, you know, using a turboprop wasn't quite as good. When I say affordability, I mean for those who could afford the Beechcraft Starship. So, yeah. This is, of course, is a, in a different class. This was originally a freeware add-on by Mario Noriega, so and it was actually from FS9. It was uh, adapted by Eagle Rotorcraft, Rotorcraft Simulations. Mario Noriega has since done some nice planes for Flight Sim, including the C-22J, if you've seen that. That's one of the nicer planes for Flight Sim. There's also the Nardi FM-333 Riviera, which I do not have. I have the Caproni Vizola C-22J, but not the Riviera. I'm at 50% throttle right now, and we are at 227 knots down here. Yeah, at this throttle and this altitude, it has four hours of fuel, so you could cruise along looking at the sights for quite a while. 
I feel like there is good room for a plane that's capable of going like 250 knots with turboprops. I think there's uh, one coming out soon though. Uh, there's the Piss- uh, not Piston Duke, the, the Turbo Duke? Or Turban Duke. Turban Duke that's supposed to be coming out, but that's payware of course. We could do with some more liveries for it. And perhaps uh, crisper ones. 246 were apparently built- well, at least 246 have been built. Oh, it's got uh, altitude warning there. Okay, okay, stop. So I'm sure there's more liveries than the Ferrari one. Technically, its cruise speed is 318 knots at altitude, of course, and a maximum speed of 400 knots at um, 31,000 feet. So it seems like a fine plane. It feels about right to fly. We'll see how it lands, but nothing too surprising so far. Fancy looking coastline here. I'm sure I have some mods that improve it. I think there is a mod that is involved in this. I liked this particular scenery. There are certain towns along the coast that are very colorful and perched on these cliffs and and so we are enjoying the detailed photogrammetry of these towns. Close to La Spezia. That's La Spezia. And it's the little towns are called Sancterre. Five villages, basically. In the citation, I would probably use the autopot, but in this, I don't feel much like it, to be honest. And I'm sure everything works the same way as in the citation. It's taken all the avionics and instrumentation from it, so I don't think there's anything particularly that we need to check. I mean, assuming it works in the Citation CJ4, of course. So we'll land that Livorno close to Pisa. I guess we'll fly by the Leaning Tower and everything. Pisa, I think, is a photogrammetry city. We have some other sites there, too. Ah, uh, it's a little bit choppy. But there's the Leaning Tower. Uh-oh, speed. Do I have air brakes? Okay, there's the Leaning Tower. It's only slightly leaning. Don't know about those cranes. Sometimes they seem to be where they ought not to be. Oh, the airport's right there. Well, I can't exactly... Uh, I shouldn't try to land immediately. Oh boy. I'm gonna try to land immediately, aren't I? Don't do this, kids. I don't know if this is the airport I was intending on landing at, but it was here, so I decided to land. There's there's some warnings there. I think it was spoilers. But I don't think the spoilers were active. Okay, we are down. Ooh, uh, for today, uh, today I've just had a tough time with the steering. Ah, or maybe these conversions just aren't great with the steering on the ground. I don't know. I can't tell which one it is, me or the conversions. But anyway, that was the P180, reasonably easy to fly, and basically what you would expect. With that little review of uh oh of the two freeware planes available on flightsim.to that I will link in the video description. I'll say thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed this video, if you did please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below. 
and I'll see you next time.